Bright too, but I'm, I'm <laughs> hey, ladies, my little it's, jumper. <laughs> it's, it's the ring light. Thank you, Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a little ring light on top of my computer. Um, actually, I got to get me a new computer. Um, thank you, Apple, because I, I think my my computer is about three years old, and it's not even accepting all the updates. So I was like, I got to get a new computer. This time, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was, I, I have to stick with, you know, Apple products, but, um, right. you know, that's a little uh, deterring that you got to every three years, they kind of force you to right. buy another one. But um, today, ladies, I want to talk about what's hot out here today, what's going on. And the first one I want to talk about is our girl, B, Beyonce. Beyonce that threw on the cowboy hat. Uh, wow. She look great. She look great. She looks good. I give it to her. She's a chameleon. <laughs> we do know we stay the same. Though, right? We mm -hmm. we um I, I want to talk about her because um you know I think people act like country and western is just for the Caucasian people and, and that's not true, you know. There, you know, a lot of people was pushing back on on Beyonce. Um, not none of us, because we kind of excited that Beyonce is, you know, taking the reins and getting ready to run. But um, a lot of people pushing back on on Beyonce that you know she should stay in her own genre. And what <laughs> is that? Because she didn't explore so many different things. I just love Beyonce. But um, what's y'all thoughts on that? Well, I have listened to the song mm -hmm, and I like um. <laughs> I like I like sixteen carriages. I, I think that is is pretty good. The other one, so I don't like it, but for some reason, it keep rings keep staying in my head. So I guess I am going to because the two I was like, I don't really like that. And I keep saying, it ain't Texas. <laughs> hold on. And I was like, why is that in my head? I don't even that like means it. it's going to come back to you, and you it's going to yeah. hold you. And that's usually how a lot of songs wind up sticking with us anyway. <laughs> yeah. But um, but I applaud her for um I, I like to see where it's where it's gonna go and how how it's all gonna um how she all gonna how it's all gonna play out. Mm -hmm. And um but um I'm just you know, I say go for it. Me Even too. though it's not my thing, but go for it. And maybe it may be my thing as I listen to it more and more. So yeah. Well, for me, um, I've always liked country music. As you guys know, I am the daughter of a black cowboy. So mm -hmm. it I have been raised on country music. Um, but I don't think that, you know, it necessarily, uh, quote unquote, belongs to those who want to claim it to turn around and say that we should not be in it. So I think if they were to do uh, the history on it, they <laughs> would find it to be like with everything else very different and to really kind of be you know started with you know those of us um to say the least right um but I think that we keep forgetting that Beyonce and she reminds us all the time but I think we still forget she's a southern girl, a southern mm -hmm. girl. She's talking Texas. about something that is so far removed from from what she knows and what her roots are mm -hmm. so I think she's just going back I think one of the songs that I like the most from her is Daddy Lessons from That's my song, Lemonade, girl. Uh, from yeah. Lemon Key. So mm -hmm. it reminds me a lot of my father. It reminds me of my relationship with my father. And, you know, one of the best lines is, you know, my daddy says, shoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> girl. Mm -hmm. going to, if you think about the fact that her father had, you know, uh, two daughters, was raising two daughters and didn't have any sons, I guess, at the time or whatever. Yeah, all these lessons have to be passed down, right? And so... You know, her father's from Alabama. Her mother's from <laughs> Louisiana. Like, how much more Southern can you get? How much Southern can you get? <laughs> so when you think about it in that aspect, and I think, like I said, with Daddy Lessons, I saw her perform that a few years back with the- um, The Dixie oh, Chick. Well, who used to be Dixie Chicks, now just Chicks. But yeah, she performed it with them live at the CMAs. And, you know, people were resentful then. 
And so um, I'm just, yeah, I, I don't understand why when, you know, were we so upset when Eminem came through and was winning, you know, oh, out of no. and in his no. Grammys and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I, I just think that it's, as long as someone is not appropriating culture, whatever you feel that culture is, then I think it's okay. So, and there's another singer who actually was a yodeler. You guys know Kay Michelle. Yes. Yes. Now we and know she, her. She loves country music as well. Yeah. But she was brought up, she's from Tennessee, brought up on country music. This girl won mm -hmm. a yodeling contest, like won scholarships based on yodeling. So we we really have to learn to start thinking outside the box. That that we have to learn to stop being so judgmental and and, and um I don't want to breathe the R word, but you know, can we please stop? That, because yeah, because I saw a a clip. This is why I need to stay off the internet, y'all. I saw a clip where John Snyder, who used to be part of, you know, um, the Dukes of Hazard, the Hazard, who was on the Tyler Perry show for many, many years, one of the mm -hmm. main characters on that show, the haves and the have-nots. Mm -hmm. But the terminology and the dog whistle words that he used. And then basically saying that her having this song out is like a dog marking its territory in different spots. Terrible. And this is a man who just lost his wife in the last year. I am hoping that, and for his sake, that that's not how you meant it. So I don't want to yeah. jump down your throat, but if we take it at face value, yo, that's not cool at all. A dog marking its spots? What you calling her? What about head? just only just like um, keeping shit to yourself, okay? Because if you know <laughs> that, I, I'm just being honest. Why don't you just keep it to yourself? Because, what well, you know, when I saw that, Chauncey, I was like, you can't even clean that one up, okay? Wow. You, you know what I'm saying? Clean that up. Just the, If you think you tell it to your household people, you know what I mean? If it was bad, that's all they would talk about. You yeah. kind of know that it's good and it's hitting home with them because they must have liked it. <laughs> it was a radio station in Oklahoma that people was calling and asking to play it. And they told them, we don't play no Beyonce song because they didn't yeah, right. know what the song was. And then the here come the beehive because they vicious. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they vicious. By three o'clock, they were playing it back to back. You know what I mean? So oh, that's right. <laughs> be careful. Be careful when you start talking. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like people, you know, we had an episode on that getting canceled. You can get canceled really quick. You yes, know? you can. Talk about two people here. Talk about Taylor Swift and Beyonce. You might get canceled. So you might just. <laughs> They're going to come after you hard, aren't they? they? <laughs> yes, I, they I, are. I, I wish her all the best because I feel like she's going to go back on tour. Maybe she can have a, bu a budget friendly tour. Um, <laughs> and, you know, where like more people like me can go. You know? But, um, I think she's gonna go back on tour, and you know she incorporate. I mean, she kind of alluded to this was coming because what was she riding on the damn horse in 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 the <laughs> Renaissance one? You know what I mean? I'm so, saying that this so, and then if you think about her um, Ivy Park collection, um, yeah. not the last one, but two collections ago or whatever, it was definitely cowboy was all intertwined in there and country with. But again, you're talking about what we call a country girl. She is a true Southern country it is. girl. It's like, I mean, can't she love her roots? What is wrong with people? Like, um, we, we just I just applaud her for just taking a chance, just being brazen enough to, to switch it up. Oh and not be stuck, not be stuck in one in one thing, but say, I can do many things. I can do different many things. things. And so, yeah. And what? And again, I don't <clears throat> need to give you all of this um, pre advanced notice. This right. is got for you you like it or you don't like it it's just that simple the one <laughs> the thing commercial sure. at the super bowl and that was it while i'm sitting in the super bowl watch that commercial come out yeah that's <laughs> that me commercial was awesome for you. it was awesome yeah. i was like go be <laughs> i was but um you know i just i wish beyonce the best i think that beyonce is definitely uh marketing um gold a marketing genius because yes. like, gold he yeah. can figure out you know, every little genre she can touch on, she's going to do it. You know what I mean? She got a hair care line coming out. You know, made people wonder what Beyonce got going on to her wigs and stuff like that. And, you know, Beyonce got a whole bunch of hair. You know what I mean? And even down to when they talked about her child and stuff like that, she used every single bit of that to benefit her later. So maybe people should pay attention and stop being judgmental and use what you got 
to get what you want because that's exactly what she do. So Beyonce, Beyonce. And then we're going to switch over to my boy, Chris Brown. Mm. Okay, what's going on with Chris? Can we ever just say, Chris, it's okay. You know what I mean? You did this 12, 15, 20 years ago. You know what? You ain't doing nothing now. Keep being your gifted self. No, because he was supposed to perform for this is NBA weekend and um somehow it got um, yeah revolt or returned. was he supposed to perform or play in the basketball um I the, the all star game yeah all he was supposed game. to play in okay. the celebrity all star game mm -hmm. okay and that's like um he was invited he was invited they really uninvited invited him they uninvited him now right. isn't that like really like um. They kind of, it makes me think about how people try to still control the narrative on him. I don't care what you do to Chris Brown. Chris Brown will always have, just like you got the Swifties, you got the Beehive, you're going to have the group of people that love Chris Brown and follow him into the depths of hell and come back up. They don't care. But you you, you, you make it obvious that you, you have something against this young man because he's being stopped at every corner we think that it's going to make him prosper and he's already prospering i mean I, I just don't understand it how do you invite somebody to uninvite him he hasn't done nothing recently and not in years so what do anybody know why he was uninvited i think he was uninvited if i'm not mistaken from what i read because there were still more recent issues so he not only had the incident with Rihanna some years ago, but you know, when he was dating the young woman, Karuchi Tran. Oh my she, God, that was years too. But oh it has God. been as long and she has a restraining order against him. So I, I believe, you know, I believe in forgiveness. You know, I believe in a person being able to redeem themselves. And, but I think what happens with some people or some organizations, it's how you redeem yourself. Sometimes people redeem themselves by walking away from the situation and trying not to talk about it again, and then just feeling like enough time has passed, and then now we're cool. There are some people who feel as though, what efforts have you taken to make sure and ensure that this does not happen again? So the situation with Rihanna, because there were criminal charges and things of that nature, he was told that he had to take, you know, anger management classes and things of that nature. Fast forward a few years and now you're with a new woman. After you've taken these classes, you now have a restraining order against you again. And well, so happy with that. Rihanna and Karuchi Tran is two different people because he didn't beat on Karuchi. Karuchi I, Tran got the got a, a restraining order because she felt like he didn't t take no from her. Like when she broke it off with him after he was messing with Rihanna again, after the beatings and all that stuff, <clears throat> he didn't take no because he still was trying to pursue her. She went and got a restraining order. That was many years ago as well. Do I think that Chris Brown is some angel? No, I do not. I think that I take all of this stuff serious because I won't want you to do it to my daughter, you know? Um, but I also know that he is a father of multiple children now, you know what I mean? And things have changed for him. Do he still have situations with fans and things like that? Yes, he's a celebrity. I'm not giving him no passes or anything like that. But my problem is you invited him, then you uninvited him. Nothing yeah. has changed in the last month or two months, you know what I mean? Like, the come on, y'all. Now that's unprofessional. I believe that, that inviting and then uninviting is unprofessional. Perfect. Just but don't at, invite me. Okay? Right. But at the same time, we all have someone that we have to be held responsible to, whether it's our sponsors, whether and it's, it's probably the, and it's probably the sponsors. It's that, the, um, yeah, it, yeah. Was sponsor. it was the potato chip people, but I ain't gonna say that. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But what but what I'm saying is we're all responsible to somebody, even people like Michael Jordan and having you know the Jordan line and the Jordan Empire and all of that and connected to Nike, they're still responsible to to others when it comes to making certain decisions and things of that nature. I'm not saying it's right. I thought it was very unprofessional of them to do that to him. And so then therefore, then you should have stood in the invite and just let it be dealt with. Absolutely. But um, at the end of the day, 
again, I don't think anything would have happened had he still been a part of it, right? Because he has relationships with these people and stuff like that, meaning, you know, the people he would have been playing in the game with or whatever. So yeah, I'm just not. And then who gets to decide when forgiveness is given and right. when when we decide to say, okay. And, and apparently the sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, my, so my, advice to, mm -hmm. my advice to him would be to go ahead and take that L and go ahead and do something else. I know it means a lot to him because I, I think he enjoys actually playing and he's been playing in, in the league in, um, um, for the all-star game, but go ahead and take that. But you can, you can do something else. And I definitely wouldn't have made it public that they, did that to me. I don't know whether he did or whether they did or however it gotten out. But um, <laughs> sometimes when you move in silence and you do something else, it, it ends up better for you. Yeah. But you yeah. know what makes it so hard? It's always the people with the other agenda. I could see him not saying anything and just be like, you know what, that was that was messed up and, and being upset. But it's the people who have the audacity to be at to be angry that they had the audacity to ask him it's always somebody else on behalf of somebody else you could be mad about something and don't open your mouth but now me i'm gonna speak up on your behalf saying i'm speaking for you and now i've made a big deal and now the whole world knows when you would have just kept it to yourself so it's just never ending and and like i said they pick and choose they pick and choose who they want to forgive and how they want to be able to forgive them. So, you know, there are so many other areas that could go into with so many other celebrities, but I'll just leave that there. They yeah, pick and I, I was getting ready to start rolling their names out. Like some people, <laughs> so I'm really, like really, some people are just forgiven, you know what I mean? And they just do some terrible stuff. You, you but, it's the point that I, but it was the point that I was saying about someone else speaking up on your behalf when you just let it go and it's not really a big deal. So it, it just, but again, you pick and choose who you want to do that with. So some people are forgiven right away or for or a little more That's forgiven true. and That's others true. are not. Others are not. Or you get like, like Michael Vick, he, he, he can't, he can't even own a dog with some, somebody mm. just, you know, talking about, you know, something that happened 20 years ago. It's like, Come on, y'all, give me a break. You know, with, with this, this is like people do things and and it may not be right. And and you know what? Uh, who are we to constantly hold that 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 scarlet letter over them forever in the day? Exactly. You, know I mean? you know what I mean? That's exactly my point. Yep. So like yo. Okay, the last one, y'all. And um this one I I kind of agree with most people when we talk about Monique. <laughs> She has valid points, valid. But you know what? Do y'all know a person? I know, I know a couple people that popped in my head. They're my friends and I love them. But sometimes when you complain all the time, the whole message get lost. You know what I mean? Like Taraji came out there and talked about her money and not being right. You know, Monique had said it years ago, but now this has arms. You see what I'm saying? She's talking about a whole lot of things. And do I think she lying? No, I don't. But I think that it gets to the point where no one looks at you as a positive being. You know what I mean? Because everything you're saying is just something that someone else did. Someone else did you. This, you know, it's more of the finger, finger, finger. This one did this. This, this, this is just my perception, y'all. Don't come for me. I'm just saying I just see a lot of the things where she rolled off Steve Harvey, Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey. You know what I mean? It's just lots of people. Do I think they may have done something to her? I do. I do. But I think it's just now we got D.L. Hughley involved and a whole bunch of other people. Like, no one can do right. That's how I feel about her. I want to hear something good going on in her life. You know what I mean? Really good. Now her son is in this. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, so you got to be careful. I just think that somebody always did a poke when you start kicking up dirt on someone else, somebody's going to find some dirt to kick up on you because when you know, you know, you just open up that can, but I don't know. I just, I just hope that sometimes she could just um, sit back, do comedy, take out all the, the, the extra um, additives that she added to it, do what she loves to do. And just um, kind of just let people settle with her. If you see what I'm talking about. Your thoughts, Tansi. Um, yeah, beating a dead horse. I feel like you walking in your truth 
doesn't necessarily make it the truth. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. how I feel. Okay. Um, but you're still operating from what you feel has happened to you. Mm -hmm. I can't negate that. We can't negate that. Mm -hmm. um, what she has said about some of these other people, if you want to believe it, then you believe it. If you don't want to believe it, then you choose not to believe it. I am of the mindset that there's a little bit of truth in everything, whether it's coming from your perspective or not. So mm -hmm. then some of what she's saying could very well be true, but I'm not here to pick and choose what that is. Um, a person who feels like they need to defend themselves. Doesn't matter how much you defend yourself. If someone wants to believe the worst of you, they're going to believe the worst of you. If someone wants to believe the best, they're going to believe the best. So it still boils down to a personal opinion. And so I can't speak so hard as to whether all that she said was true, was, were there some things that she spoke on that made a lot of sense at the time? It sure does. But going forward, no, you became who they thought you were because you were trying so hard to prove your point. So then now what it turned into years later, you lost money, not because of what someone said at that time, but because of what you turned it into. And then now here we are 10, 15 years later, and then now you wanna play a tape that you recorded someone on. Doesn't matter whether it was legal or not. We're talking about an ethical standpoint here. You recorded a conversation. Now you want to share with this person and share with that person. And some of it got leaked. And even the part that got leaked, I still didn't, I still don't hear what they heard. So it, again, it still boils down to opinion and it's like, move on, take your talent, use your talent for what it's worth and just keep moving forward. Learn the lessons from before. And then know your worth going forward, but don't make it about everything else, whether it's color, whether it's size, I'm, I'm fat, she's thin, I'm dark, she's light and you know, all of this. Yeah, it just, you gotta let it go at some point. Write your book, be done and, and let's move on. Exactly. Keisha? I think that um, it's like how drama, always follow certain people like it's never a smooth thing and I'm also thinking about the trauma that she may have suffered younger that she has this fight or flight so she's always in this fight mode with everything that may not necessarily be a fight right. might just be um just a simple conversation like you said Chauncey I don't you know what she said could you know possibly is truthful that these things are happening to her. But then I wonder why certain people is always, and I know we all have things that happen, you know, every now and then when, when somebody has something with every situation and everything is going on, it, it's something, something's amiss there. I, I you know. You don't look yeah. at yourself and stuff. You know? Yeah. I mean? It gives me very Trump vibes. It's all. <laughs> Oh, seriously. Yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. But it does. It just is always somebody else's fault. And so, yeah. but does it, it does it can it take away from what your talent is? No. Did you so I'm 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 just saying I there are some things that some of us, it's not that we haven't worked hard, it's not that we're not talented, it's not that we're not good. But when we look at how some of us fall into certain things based on how we started. If you start out as a comedian, right? You might not have studied to be an actor, so on and so forth. But now you, you, you know, comedians do sometimes make the best actors in dramatic roles and stuff like that because of, you know, their backgrounds. But if you look at someone like a Taraji who literally studied this as her craft, it's like the person that studied to become a CPA and they're doing taxes versus somebody who just do taxes and been doing taxes for a while. You understand the difference between the two? Yeah, yeah. One is mm -hmm. a professional in this, has studied their craft, have taken their certifications and gotten their licenses and their degrees, whereas the other person just do this because they happen to fall into it and have been doing it a long time. It doesn't take away the fact that they can do it, but it still doesn't you know, equate them all the time with the person who actually has really studied this craft and knows what it is that they're doing. That, that's just how I see it. And so- um, like I said, it doesn't mean that she's wrong. It doesn't mean that she's lying. It's just that, okay, we're almost at 20 years later now. What are you doing now? 
Mm -hmm. She just loses all her credibility, cool points, credibility mm -hmm. points. She just loses them all. And um, I just I just hope that she will. Because I don't think she is ever at the point where she listens to anybody. Because I'm sure people have touched her and say, hey, let's just, you know, maybe you want to just approach it differently. You know what I mean? And, you know, just like you said, Keisha, if every situation is something wrong, you got to do some self-identifying. You really do. Like, mm -hmm. I think about it, we probably all have been through this level in life. You know what I mean? Where um, I, I talk to my kids about this all the time. At some point, you're not going to be right. And that's many points. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you're going to have to, you know, pull back. You're going to have to listen. And you're going to have to just take the medicine. Because guess what? You're Humble not going to be right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You're not going to be right. And if you come out wrong the situation, you can wrong make the situation worse when you add in your 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 ketchup and tomato sauce and, and mustard to it too. You know what I mean? Like, yo, girl, come on now, like um enhance your craft and right. stop pointing the fingers so you can keep working. You know what I mean? Think about how many years she has not been working because like I was looking at this interview she did and talking about the Parkers and stuff like that. Okay, if the studio wronged you, then they give you your money, go get an attorney and sue them. We don't need to near know all that stuff. You, you see what I'm saying? Or Those say I was not I was not versed enough at that time to know how to do it the right way. Right. The thing is, look at what happened to TLC and their music contract and them finding out how broke they really were. And Tony Braxton. Tony and Braxton. Mm -hmm. People who found out the way that they should not have done it. The thing was, did you find out from that lesson going forward that I should do it differently? And then now you were, you're a better for it. And then now you take what you learned and you share it with those behind you, not beating the dead horse behind you, but saying, Hey, I'm not sure if this is your situation, but this is what I learned from doing that. That's all. And so I think as a community, we want her to win. And I hope that she understands and recognizes that. But at the same time, just like she's speaking of her experience, you can't speak to what Tyler and Oprah's experience was with you. Right, right. You need this behavior. Let's be fair and let's be honest. If they're telling you what their experience was, that's right. not starting a rumor about you. That's not talking about you. It's saying what their experience was. So why is their experience any less than yours? Because they have more money. Yeah, I just think, um, you know, when she self-identifies this, um, maybe it won't be too late. Um, you know, let's wish for the hope the best for her. Yes, because I want her to win. I think I she's going to win. I want everybody to win. I want her to win. I mean, you know, win, girl, win. All right. Great topic, y'all. <laughs> Great topic. So any closing remarks? No, just I think with no. all the topics, they're current and, you know, let's keep them coming. <laughs> coming all right ladies well um great topic um we'll be back on the porch next wednesday with a new topic so joining me tonight is i'm your girl chauncey and i'm keisha and i'm your girl kimmy have a good week on purpose and we'll see you next wednesday take care